There are five experiments that we know are coming up in the NXL IGCSE Biology Papers in 2022. We're gonna take you through what they are and what they show you to set you up for your exams. Let's do it. Okay, the first spec point on the major focus list is this one, investigating diffusion and osmosis in living and non-living systems. Now this can take a few different forms, who can forget the infamous thistle funnel question, mm -hmm. but they all boil down to demonstrating one of two simple bits of theory. Either molecules move from an area of high to an area of low concentration, that's diffusion, or water molecules move by osmosis from an area of high water potential, that's a dilute solution, to one of lower water potential, which is a more concentrated one. So let's have a look at that into non-living systems first. So two very simple setups. Here we've got three blocks of agar gel that we've been colored with phenolphthalein, that's a pH indicator, which we can submerge in hydrochloric acid. And as the acid diffuses in, so the indicator will turn colorless. Here I've changed the size of the cube to alter the surface area to volume ratio, and we can see that the smaller the cube, and so higher the ratio, the faster diffusion will take place. Here we have a different setup. Each of the pouches in these boiling tubes is made of a material called visking tubing. This works like a cell membrane in that water can pass through it, but solutes can't. And in each pouch is a 0.5 molar salt solution, and each boiling tube is a different concentration of salt. Now it's the water that will move. Where the water potential is higher in the boiling tube, water moves into the pouch and it'll gain mass. Where it's higher in the pouch, it'll move out. And where it's the same, well, it'll stay the same. Now we can also show osmosis in living tissues, and we've done a whole other video on those experiments, which you can watch there. Right. Let's get rid of that. Now the second experiment we have coming up in paper one is this one. Investigating breathing in humans, including the release of carbon dioxide and the effect of exercise. Right, to do this properly, I will need an assistant. Now, in order to show the release of carbon dioxide, we could do a few different things. We could use lime water, we could even use a carbon dioxide monitor like this one, but what we're going to use is our old friend hydrogen carbonate indicator. My glamorous assistant will breathe through the straw into the boiling tube of hydrogen carbonate, and we should see a colour change to yellow if carbon dioxide is produced. But we also need to show the effect of exercise, and that can be as simple as by measuring his breathing rate before and after a bout of exercise of different intensities. To do that, I just need to count his breaths for, say, 20 seconds and multiply by three for breaths per minute. I say I have to, what I've actually done is hire my assistant, an assistant. Right, chaps, go. Right, enzymes. This one's a classic coming up in paper two. Let's get it set up. So there we go. Every 10 seconds, I take a drop of the reaction mixture and place it onto the iodine to test for starch. At first, the mixture is testing positive for starch, which means the reaction hasn't finished yet. Eventually, the iodine will stop changing color, and that means all of the starch has been digested. So the faster this happens, the faster the rate of reaction. We then do the whole thing again, using different buffers to manipulate the pH to find out what the optimum pH is for, in this case, amylase. Clever stuff. Next. Fourth up is another one in paper two this year, using hydrogen carbonate indicator to show net gas exchange in a plant. Here we go.
This is a really nifty little setup that allows us to measure net gas exchange by looking at tiny changes in pH caused by changing concentrations of carbon dioxide dissolved in the water. So at atmospheric concentrations, the indicator is red, but here near the light source, lots of photosynthesis are taking place, using up the carbon dioxide and turning the indicator purple. At the other end, respiration has created more carbon dioxide than photosynthesis is used up, pushing the pH down a little bit and turning the indicator yellow. So the color of the indicator can tell you where the balance lies between aerobic respiration and photosynthesis. And last but not least, it's food tests. Four tests to learn about, let's do the lot. First, glucose, the Benedict's test. Add Benedict's solution to your sample, heat it in a water bath about 90 degrees, it'll turn green at low concentrations and you get this brick red precipitate at higher ones. Easy enough, but don't forget the heating step in your exam, there's always a mark for that one. Next, testing for protein, and this is the Biorit test. Place a few drops of copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide into your sample, and if there's protein there, it'll turn purple. Beautiful. Then there's starch, maybe the easiest of the lot. Add iodine, it turns blue, black, if there's starch around, straightforward and lastly for lipids add ethanol and mix if there's lipid in the sample you get a white emulsion which looks milky and that's the lot and that's it five experiments that we can be pretty confident will come up in some way shape or form in 2022 learn them well that'll do us for today thanks for sticking with us go well with your exams if they're coming up and we'll see you next time